Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, you you sound great. Uh, okay, yeah. Let me just scan out my notes out here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, my name is Zan or Madam Zan. I need some help. Awesome. Well, good to virtually <laughs> meet all of you guys you. today. Um, <coughs> so, um, here's how this is going to go. Why don't you guys give me the lowdown, kind of what you're looking for, all that kind of fun stuff. And then I'll just put myself on mute, and I'll unmute if I have any uh, questions. But if, if anything comes up uh, uh, in between, please just just let me know, and I'll. Yeah, uh, I'll okay. Um, let me make up my notes a lot here. Oh God, I'm doing way too much, aren't I? Where do we demarcate creativity and embarrassment? Is it even productive to draw that distinction? Is not every creative act some sort of embarrassing display of a person's entrails? Bro is not cooking. Bro, 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 bro. Anyway, hello. Last time I made one of these videos was in 2020. And I was so hyped to make that video because after a lifetime of consuming reptile collection slash reptile room tour videos, I was ready to make my own. It was just wood chips and a bunch of other random crap. Bro, please, I am literally just vibing. Bro, please leave okay. me alone. Bro, please, Bro, please, 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 please. I thought that I had uh, some cool stuff to show some people. Since then, my collection has grown and shrunk and changed and done all the things that time does to a person and a hobby. But I haven't made another video since, and... Really, that's for two reasons. One is for a long time, I was very not pleased aesthetically with how my reptile setups look. And two, I felt that I honestly wasn't taking the best care of my reptiles that I could have been. For me, manifested as an extended period of stagnation and me essentially doing the bare minimum. The bare minimum when it comes to animal care is not something I really take lightly to. Like I would classify it as borderline neglectful and in my case, definitely deprogression is hard as it may sound. And for whatever reason, my brain played this trick on me that said, noticing that there is a large room for improvement means that you're not good enough, which is just stupid. But that, that doesn't mean that I can't improve. So here I am. I want to show y'all all of my reptiles, but I want to do something a little bit different here. I want to tell you a little bit about what my plans for them in the future are, since pretty much every single one of the animals in this room I intend on giving some sort of enclosure upgrade, either to a larger cage or to both a larger cage and a bioactive setup. The goal is to take everyone here bioactive. If you don't know a whole lot about bioactivity, you should check out my previous video where I took Athena, my Baron's Racer's cage, and made it go bioactive. It's a pretty good video. Please check it out. Anyway, come hang out with my scaly homies with me. If you haven't seen the last video I posted, um, you should go watch it because it's actually, oh, it's about this snake.
Um, and I think that there's a good explanation in there as to why I can't really hold her that well. So obviously Athena's poor balance and flightiness make it really difficult to handle her in a good way. And I do imagine her lack of balance isn't just a thing that inhibits her movement, but is also something that causes her significant stress. Your brain telling your body to write itself, but your body being unable to execute on that command, I imagine is not something that is very pleasant uh, when done in the sporadic and at times spastic nature that Athena seems to exist in. Even aside from the wobble, Athena was never really the best snake to handle, mainly because she was pretty skittish and also secondarily because she's venomous. <laughs> it's neither here nor there. I mean, no, it's 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 definitely here. She She's mostly nice and she never really bit me in any serious capacity, but um, she's about my friend and, and he had to spend, uh, you know, a couple evenings at the hospital. He was fine. There, there was no real actual danger there, but yeah, maybe she just isn't the type of snake that you should be handling all that often. Not a lot has changed since I made her bioactive terrarium. Everything is going pretty well with the exception of some of the plants dying. But hey, that's the whole bioactive cycle. Life, death, and rebirth is a constant circle, and isn't that a beauty? I'm currently stewing over whether or not to make changes to this. One of the problems that I had when I set up her cage initially is that she wasn't really using the climbable height of the cage all that much, and that's still kind of true for right now. I think the plant layout, too, is a little bit sporadic and doesn't really suit the cage in the best possible way. But if I'm gonna make any changes to the cage, I wanna make those changes with the best interest of her quality of life in mind. If I make any changes, they'll probably be made by the end of the year this year after I've given her enough time to adjust to it. But she's close to nine years old, I believe. I got her as a full grown adult from one of my local pet stores and I've had her for about seven years at the time of this video. And yeah, great snake. Just unfortunately somewhat off limits as far as handling goes for the reasons I stated previous. Go watch that bioactive video if you haven't. Athena's a lovely girl. As you can tell, I'm like a little bit scared of this snake. This is Nyx, my Mexican black king snake. She is probably the single most food motivated animal I have ever had. She's gonna bite my ass, she's gonna bite me. <laughs> like, she's not dangerous, you know? It's just, I don't like being bit. I feel like this is also a fairly good time to mention that there's this really interesting subsection of the reptile community that really glorifies being injured by your animals and being kind of careless when it comes to protecting yourself from your animals. Where like being bitten up by your snake or being clawed up by your monitors is something that's like actively super dope. Like there was this Facebook post I saw one time in this monitor group where this guy said, yeah, I make sure to never wear long sleeves when I'm handling my monitors, always short sleeves or tank tops so I can feel the lethality in their claws or whatever. Like it was so lame. You're so hard, bro. Everyone thinks you're so hard. I have like a really good track record of not being bitten by my animals very often. And I feel like Nyx kind of holds the award for most bites for like most bites landed on me for any animal. and it's really just because like king snakes in general just have huge appetites for the most part she's like a really good snake she's super healthy i got her as like a little baby worm snake she had some really intense scale damage and she was definitely very malnourished she was like a quarantine purchase for me but she's gotten huge and she's so strong and she has a lot of personality. Like she's very curious. She'll always come up to check out what's going on. But by virtue of me being like a grad student now and having a schedule that kills me, I just don't get to spend as much time like hanging out with her as I might like to. And thus like, I'm kind of scared of her as a result because she's bitten me so many times. Like not in defense or anything. Like they're usually bites because she thinks she's being fed because most of the times I interact with her, it's just, you know, me feeding her. She will do like exploratory bites you know where she's just like "Ooh, what's this is it food let me find out like she'll take a bite before she realizes that what she's dealing with is actually food and that's what's so annoying you know i'm wearing these gloves right now but she'll go for my arm the same way that she'll go for a glove i think if i handled her more she'd probably be a lot nicer i mean she's nice she's just you know she's hungry she knows what she likes and what she likes is eating, eating food. Her cage is all right. I think the big improvement that I could make to it is by giving her some more substrate to dig in, but she takes her meals. 
She has huge poops rather regularly. Her scales are beautiful. She doesn't have the same scale damage that she used to uh, when she was a small child. There's a couple remnants from that era, but for the most part, like, she's truly like a beautiful, stunning snake. Um, and she's just gotten so big over the years too, like such a large bodied, heavy animal. And I hope she continues to be, to do that. Look, she's like, look at how she's moving. She's like, oh, 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 oh. Like, like, why are you moving like that? It reminds me of that one video of the tiger show. I think eventually I'd like to take her bioactive into like a fully custom made enclosure, but she's kind of lower on that list just because the setup that she's in right now is working pretty well for her. Probably do like a little mini upgrade like before the end of the year where I give her some more substrate to bury in, as well as toss in this like, this thing. It's this thing. This thing being like a dead cactus that my friend very generously bought for me. I'll probably give her like an upgrade before the year is over, but, um, but she's doing super well. I love this snake. So this is Apollo, my corn snake. He is the oldest animal that I have in my room. He is my pal through thick and thin. He's moved with me so many times. Um, and he is, I mean, I give myself a lot of credit, but I really think Apollo deserves a lot of credit with getting most of my friends who are either ambivalent about reptiles or scared of them to realize that they're actually really, really cool animals. I've had him since 2012 or 2013. I bought him as an adult at a reptile show. And he's just, I mean, he's just the sweetest guy. He, it's unfortunate I don't spend as much time with him um, as I would really like to, but in his old and senior age, well, I guess not really senior because these snakes can live to be like 20 something years old. He's just, he's stayed that sweet and that kind. And, um, you know, he volunteers every once in a while. He's just a great snake all around. And I, I just, I love him so much. He is uh, next on the list to receive a bioactive setup. He's been in this 50 gallon for years upon years at this point. It's okay, like he has spots that he likes to hang out in, spots that he likes to, ooh, Elio sees him right now. Say hi. He probably doesn't like it. Doesn't, not a big, not a big snake fan. He, he's next in line to get like a full bioactive setup. I have like another four by two cage that I wanna put him in and that will probably be his forever home until I decide that I wanna put him in something even larger. But he's really just like an amazing snakeroo. Just an all around great guy, top bloke, great guy, mega geese. Hello. Also Apollo's on my arm. He'll be with me forever, even after he's gone. Apollo, I feel like, is a really good snake to teach people about what morphs are. He's a melanistic, so he's not quite albino, but he has those characteristically red um, albino eyes. Most corn snakes, they have like dark patterning on them and come in a variety of colors from yellow to orange to red, burgundy, even gray, white, and all that kind of stuff. But he has like a complete absence of dark colors, like no black, no brown, no splotches or anything like that. He's melanistic, which Here's the definition. I honestly, I hope he lives forever because he's just such a great snake and he's been with me through so many different life changes. I really couldn't ask for a better pal. Yay. <laughs> The shot is kind of a four for one, but we're gonna focus on this man right now. The man, the myth, the legend, Krakimus Maximus, also known as Cracky. Hey buddy, you wanna come out? Hopefully he comes out. So Cracky's my Aki monitor. I've had him since 2019. And he and I have both done a lot of growing since 2019, but the most consistent thing about Cracky since I've had him um, is that he has such a genuine curiosity and interest in everything that is going on around him. Like you can see him right now, he's just on my arm. He's sniffing everything. He wants to do a bit of climbing. I think a lot of that can be chalked up to food motivation. He is just genuinely interested in what is going on around him. Like on a couple occasions, he has escaped his cage and just kind of roamed around my room. He loves going behind the stack of cages, I think because it's really tight and he can feel really safe there. It only happened a few times, but a few times is enough for me. I don't want to hold him too much right now because he's in shed. 
Um, but he's such a lovely, lovely lizard. Like he's so friendly. I'll be honest, he'll bite like every once in a while. Man has no hands and sometimes he will use his mouth to explore the world around him. But other than that, he's like a super nice lizard, super fun to interact with. He did bite my friend's girlfriend one time after I did this whole spiel and said, nah, he's super nice. Like, don't worry about him. And then just literally like just if I'm being quite honest, his cage his cage sucks. He used to be in a 50 gallon. I upgraded him to this four by two by two. It was working good for a while. The, the primary reason it's not working well right now is he doesn't have nearly enough room to burrow. Acumoners are from Australia and the places that they're in in Australia are extremely hot. They like to burrow down in these super humid tunnels where the humidity can reach like 80, 90 plus percent. The cage that I have right him is just not conducive for that. He is definitely in need of a cage upgrade. I'm planning on doing it in two stages. One, just doing a minor upgrade to the one that he's currently in, just to give him some more substrate to burrow into and also improve just the look of the enclosure in general, because it's kind of all over the place right now. Two, eventually I want to move him into a much larger uh, cage, because four by two by two, well, he does like fit in there technically. I think that a six foot cage would benefit him immensely. Like I think he would just go crazy and have a great time in it. Be cool to do a bioactive as well. Acumonitors are kind of destructive. So I don't know how exactly that would work, but I'd give it a shot. It'd be fun. And he's worth it because he's such a great little lizard. And now I'm up here with Cracky's lover, Elio. I say that because when I first got Elio, my jeweled Lacerda, I would always catch him and Cracky kind of looking at each other. And I imagined it as them kind of gazing forlorn at each other, mourning a romance that would never be, separated by impermeable glass walls. But realistically, they were probably just trying to alpha up on each other, which I don't know, maybe that's not so different. What we got now? <laughs> Elio is a jeweled Lacerda, and he's also lovely. He helped kickstart my YouTube channel. Let's see if he wants to hang out with us. What do you have to say? I will settle for your project of spectacularization, but he draw the line at manhandling. There he is. So he, I think his cage is pretty. Okay, go back in, okay, it's fine. But just generally, he's always been a little bit more skittish and hesitant to want to come out, say hi to the camera and, and say hi to these giant slimy creatures that, I think his cage is pretty nice actually. I think it's one of my better examples of actually delivering on a theme that I was trying to do. I saw all these pictures of Jewel Lacerda's hanging out on sunny rock outcroppings just basking in like these big clumps of rocks with plants growing out of them and twisted tree branches sticking out of them. I made this cage in 2021. I actually had a whole video planned around doing it and that's kind of around when I quit making YouTube videos because I just kind of went insane. Not actually. Sick one! <laughs> But despite the fact that I'm satisfied with it, Elio is still in need of a cage upgrade. I want to make him go bioactive. I want to plant grasses. I want a custom background. So yeah, it looks good and it works good for him right now, but he's on the list to get an upgrade. He's probably below Cracky, but above Nyx. Oh, I've also had him for like four years, maybe? Yeah. Who's next? So this is Teddy's mod. He's unfortunately not my lizard and he's actually leaving me tomorrow. Like I'm filming this video kind of at the last second just while I still have him. Oh, so <laughs> sausage man. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, those burrowing claws really, really hurt. Amazing lizard. Couldn't recommend that enough people get a blue tongue skink. He's so funny. He's so curious. He's so sweet. Um, such a good apple. Just a genuinely great lizard. I've been watching him for my friend for the better part of three years and she's finally taking him back. He's truly been a lovely, lovely person. person. 
Like, I say that Athena's cage was my first, like, actual bioactive cage because I don't really count this one. It's, like, only semi-bioactive. Like, there's mealworm beetles that live in the dirt and there's mealworms that breed and eat up his poop. Um, but there's no live plants in the cage simply because Teddy is too destructive. Like, he has these fake ferns and stuff that I think look pretty good. But really, really the only reason the bugs are in here is just to eat up his uh, enormous runny poops. I mean, need I say more? Very sad to be parting with him. Rest in peace. Tedders, you will be missed. So housed within this big wooden box is Bosk, my Savannah monitor, who I love very dearly, and who unfortunately will comprise a section of this video that I title the bummer section. And the reason it's a bummer is because I think Bosk is at the end of his life. And I don't know if there's anything that I can do to really prolong it all that much, which makes me really sad. I've had Bosk since 2015. I made a video a while ago called the Savannah Monitor Trap. I don't know how well that video has held up, but the general premise of it, getting a Savannah Monitor as a pet is kind of a trap for a lot of new reptile keepers because most people getting into reptiles and who want to keep lizards will at some point or another discover monitor lizards and how cool they are. And upon seeing how cool they are, we're like, all right, well, maybe we should get one. Do I get something giant like a black throat monitor or an Asian water monitor? Well, no, I don't really have the accommodation space for that. And that seems like a lot of work. Do I get something like an Aki monitor? Well, I don't want to drop $500 on a new lizard. And also it's kind of small. Well, maybe I'll get a Savannah monitor because size wise, it's in the middle between the dwarf monitors and the giant ones. And you can find them at nearly any reptile pet shop between the price of 15 and $50. They're always at reptile shows and they're quite cute and seem pretty personable. So why shouldn't I get one? And the answer to that question is because they're incredibly difficult to take care of. If I could go back and do it all over again, as much as I love Bosk, I would not have purchased him as a pet. Savannah monitors require enormous enclosures with extremely high heat, extremely high humidity, and extremely expensive diets that they need to be fed pretty much every single day. In the past eight-ish years of me owning Boss, I've done the best that I can to take care of him, but within the past year and a half, he went completely blind. He stopped burrowing and making tunnels. His level of activity decreased. While for a long time he was still able to eat, it was incredibly difficult for him. His blindness was caused by cataracts. I took him to the vet. The vet told me, this is something that can happen to lizards at this age, and there's like one scientific paper published on successfully doing cataract surgery on a monitor lizard, but He's like, realistically, that's just not something that we're gonna be able to do considering the age of this animal. Said that Boss looked healthy, and at the time he told me that he's seen many lizards live long and fulfilling lives despite their blindness. After he went blind, he had a lot of difficulty eating food. Obviously, he couldn't really hunt for food since his vision was gone. He would smell around and I would hold roaches up to him. His aim was terrible. Eventually he started growing tired of this and it got to the point where every time I would offer him food, he would just kind of get annoyed and defensive at it. Giving him live food like mealworms and roaches all of a sudden became completely out of the equation. Bosk's diet has almost entirely consisted of dubia roaches for most of his life and that large staple of food being removed from his diet caused me a lot of trouble. The current period of lethargy he's going through right now has seen him lose a lot of weight. Being in this position is very, very strange for me because I feel like I'm grieving this lizard before he even has a chance to go. The inquisitive, curious, and genuinely hilarious lizard that I've known for the better part of eight plus years isn't really there anymore. There was a period in time where Bosk used to wake me up in the morning uh, in order to feed him where he learned basically what my schedule was and <laughs> I would wake up to the mor wake up in the morning to him scratching on the glass of his cage and he would stop when my eyes would open and then I would stare back at him and he'd just be like you got food bro you gonna feed me bro and I'm like yes but at this point right now I don't know what else is left for me to do to this lizard short of putting him down and 
you know, I don't really want to explore that option as of yet, but if it gets to the point where he's sincerely just withering and withering, it might be something that we look at. Which I know, this is like an incredible bummer to have to discuss in a reptile room video, but this is the reality of owning pets, uh, especially the reality of owning reptiles. Reptiles have this rep for kind of randomly dying on people, and I think the reason for that is because reptiles don't show signs of sickness or decay in the same way that most mammals like dogs, cats, and even people do. A lot of times when you realize that there is a health problem wrong with your reptile, uh, it's usually too late for that reptile. Reptiles also have a tendency to kind of do the opposite where they can survive and honestly even thrive in improper and unhealthy conditions for such a long time, which gives keepers the false assumption that they are taking care of their reptiles appropriately when really these animals are just slowly and slowly and slowly withering away. I think the lesson is to do your research, really, really, really do your research and make sure that you are as prepared as possible for the animal. Never buy an animal because it's a good deal. Never buy an animal because it's convenient. Buy an animal and be prepared for the fact that even though you may have paid $20, $30 for this lizard, that you're going to need to spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars in vet trips over the coming decade plus in enclosure upgrades, in research, in food, and all the other costs associated with owning any other pet. Just because the reptile is dumber or more like primitive than other animals doesn't mean that it's any less difficult to take care of or requires any less of your time. So that's Bosk. It's my hope that he lives the rest of his twilight years in peace, and I'm going to do everything in my power to give him that. We love Bosk on this channel. What is up gamers? Big haircut here. Thanks for listening to me drone on for a while in this video. This video was really hard to make. I scrapped it like three times over the past two years um, before I decided on this version of it. Turning this conversation about improving reptile care from neglect and grieving my lizard before he actually goes into content was a very difficult thing that I think in hindsight is a little bit embarrassing, but I don't know. I think people should see that like this is a hobby, yes, but these are like animals that you're taking care of and they shouldn't be treated like commodities. They should be treated like beings. If, you know, you make mistakes and you deprive those beings of their quality of life, that is a lesson that you should learn from. And I feel like me broadcasting that to everyone is like part of it. Or maybe it's bad because then I'll just get crucified in the comments. Thanks for watching my videos. I appreciate it. I do make these for my own personal entertainment though. Strange vibes aside, I really do appreciate you watching. I have more videos for the rest of the year planned, so I hope you tune in and watch them. And you can't do that unless you subscribe to the channel. Is that subscribe button. And also turn on the bell for post notifications because when I post something, you want to be notified of it. And I want you to be notified of it. And you should subscribe. See you in the shadow. All the gear flying around looks great. <laughs> He's content farming for TikTok? It's for a YouTube video. Do another one. Uh.